So my internet is currently provided via a copper cable and I've just stood next to my Wi-Fi router and took a speed test. As you can see, download speed 17 megabytes per second and upload speeds of 0.87 megabytes per second. So if you don't know what that means, if I produce a 25 minute 4K video, it can take me about two days to upload the thing. And for further comparison, this is what the average is meant to be. The download should be 69.4 megabits per second and uploading speed, not point something, but 18.4 megabits per second. And the problem we have here is there's no fiber optic broadband. So it looks like I've got no other option for fast internet until I checked online and I found that Starlink is now available. So I've done no other research into this other than the website says it's awesome. Let's unbox it, install it and try it out, shall we? So it's not cheap something like this. I actually paid 300 British pounds. And from what I can tell, I have to pay 75 pound a month to use it. That's a lot of money to me, but it's also my business. So I don't really have a choice. So things that are white and clean don't remain this way in this workshop. Good for me. This place here changes a man. Oh yeah, in what way? I used to be white. We'll do our best though, but that's the first item, the dish itself. Ooh, we've got some large instructions for the elderly. So to get started, we need to go on setup.starlink.com and we've got a QR code just for fast tracking that. Fairly obvious explanation on the angle and where we should put the thing. And so by the looks of it, extremely simple to set up. So that's the router. Get my mucky fingers on this already. So it looks like we've got a decent length of cable. Obviously this is going outside and then the router is going to be inside. So I need to figure out a way of putting this through the wall and keeping it sealed. And here's our power supply, which is obviously all matchy matchy. Looks very tidy. Blah, 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 not important. So I didn't get this from the Starlink website. They actually added another charge of an extra 75 pounds, which I think they called it like a congestion charge or something. They're so overwhelmed that they're charging extra, just people leave them alone, I guess. No, I actually got this from Tool Station, which meant that I didn't have to pay that extra fee. So it's gonna take a while to upload, as you know. Now you can actually buy brackets for this, but why buy if you can make? Right, open. So I'm gonna go on Start Setup. So then find a clear view of the sky. So I guess I'll take this outside, we'll begin setting it up. Right, so it's apparent we can't just mount it with the current stand. This is just for setting up for testing. And so what I actually need is a wall bracket. And you can see the average price is about 50 something pounds. So I'm too impatient to wait for next day delivery. And I've got skills anyway, so I've raided my scrap pile and I found this bit of pipe. I've also got this little bit of plate for the wall fixings. So let's quickly knock something together. Starlink have tried to be very proprietary, meaning they've created unique fixings that is hard to copy. The idea is this slots into there, you just simply squeeze those and that pulls out. So the Chinese have already created copies, getting the right angles for everything. And I could myself take measurements and 3D print something, but because I've got this, I don't actually need to. On the back, we've got some nice little details to drill some holes through. And then I'll simply bolt this to the piece of steel and that will get welded to my pipe. There you go, that was quick enough. So now I'll get my uh, mounting plate, align the plastic bracket on top. And using the same drill bit, I'll mark out where those holes need to go. And then back under the drill press. Right, now for tapping the holes. And that's for an M6 bolt. Perfect. So after drilling a few more holes, all I need to do is bend this pipe. And all that's left is to just weld it together. And that is now done. As you saw, it was really easy and only took me half an hour. All you need is 15 years of professional fabricating experience and about two grand's worth of equipment. I did also spend half the day staring at it and wondering what I was gonna do. But the steel to me was free, so if I completely devalue my time, then um, I saved about 50 quid. Might be easier just to buy one. Right, I'm not gonna paint this, I'm actually gonna linseed oil it. And then at a later date, I might get it powder coated or even hot dip galvanized, but I need to make some drain holes if I do that. Anyway, let's install it. So 
So apologies for the audio, but moving on, we have 15 meters of cable altogether. So for a small bungalow like mine, I can actually put it anywhere I want in the house. But anyway, on the router, that's gonna simply plug into the back, along with the power lead, that goes in there. Plug it in, we'll get testing. Right, I'm back. This was a bit confusing, but I found out the solution. You can't actually register through the app. You have to go onto the website to register. Oh, that's annoying. They've still got the congestion charge. Why are they charging that? Due to network congestion in your area, there is an additional one-time charge to purchase Starlink. Our intention is to no longer charge this fee to new customers as soon as the network capacity improves. All right, so don't get this because there's too many of you. I'm going to have to bite the bullet because I need good internet. All right, so I've proven it's me. I've now got the verification code. Verify. Ooh, and now we seem to be linked. All right, so something new has happened. Starlink has decided to stop working. And it turns out I'm facing in completely the wrong direction. Now initially it tells you to point it north, which is what I did. But there's a reason why it gives you the temporary kickstand before you install it. Because now it's actually telling me to point it south. And because it's not optimised in the right position, it's like rebooting itself, trying to fix itself. So basically I'm going to have to take it down and put it on the opposite corner of the house so it faces south. But worst comes to worst, I can just chop that bracket and re-weld it. It's not an issue. Anyway, let me take it down and reposition it. Now, if I actually read the instructions, I wouldn't be in this mess. So, I'm making all the mistakes so you don't have to. Right, so I'm at the other end of the house now, and I'm checking alignment. So I'm going to put it roughly where I think it will be, which is about there. Weirdly, I can hear the uh, electrical noises inside the dish. So I'm probably risking myself getting cancer from it at the moment. This is taking a very long time. I can see well I got the stand for it now. Come on, pick up a satellite. Ha! Huh. Oh! There, it wants that orientation. Oh, I wish I bought an adjustable one now. So I'm gonna have to do a bit more welding. <sighs> right, so I've just topped up all my uh, stupid mistakes. I, uh, I cut the wrong end off. I'm doing the classic thing when you rush, and that is measure once and cut twice. But it actually doesn't matter, because now I've got two points of adjustment. I've put a little sleeve inside the pipe, and what I'll do is I'll put a self-tapping screw to secure it in place. But essentially, I can have this bracket anywhere I want now. In fact, why don't we put it up here a little bit? There we are. Right, let's get the dish on. Is that through there again? So apparently we're still misaligned, but only by five degrees. Right, now apparently that is the correct direction. So I'm putting a self-tuffing screw. I just... Right, so it does help if you have the right adapter. Now that should be just fine. All right, so now what's the speed test like? 368 megabytes per second and 21 megabits per second uploading. That's phenomenal. All right, so I've been living with Starlink for about a week now. So here's some of the interesting extras that you probably want to know. So the first thing to point out is that the Wi-Fi router doesn't have the longest of range. So currently it's positioned at the other end of my house, which is approximately 10 meters away. So there's lots of rooms and stuff in between. So the Wi-Fi in my workshop is currently terrible. You can see 0.7 megabits per second. And day to day, even close to the router, it slightly varies. I guess it depends on whether it's in range of another satellite. And for example, today it's very foggy very cloudy and by the Wi-Fi it's about 150 megabits per second which is still twice as good as the norm I must point out otherwise in close proximity to the router and on very clear days we're getting well over 300 megabits per second so next I just want to point out some of the features of the app one thing I absolutely love is the network key here I can see exactly who is linked onto the Wi-Fi and if I want to at any point I can actually click on and pause their connection now I actually have a daughter who is about to become a teenager and she has a computer in her room. So our home policy is no child gets to use the internet without adult supervision. But every so often, my daughter, she does a lot of design work on her computer. So she needs to do some updates, maybe go on YouTube for references, stuff like that. So for those periods of time, I can just click unpause on my phone. She can then do what she needs to do. Since she's done, I can then pause it back again. And sometimes we've even done like half an hour slots for watch time, if you like. So I basically then set a timer on my phone that says half an hour. And I say, every on your time is up and if there's any complaining or no one listens I kill the Wi-Fi every parent's different but that's what we do so that for me as far as internet safety goes I like that function it also has built-in content filtering so it'll automatically detect malware in any adult content 
And another feature I didn't realize this has is it has a snow melt mode. So you can see here, so the weatherman keeps threatening snow at the moment, so I've set mine to automatic. And so I did wonder the angle that it's actually on, if snow landed on that, it could break the thing. But to have that feature means that I've not got to worry about that. And as you probably just saw, we can set a sleep schedule. So that way you can schedule in breaks from the internet, and also it's not consuming lots of power all the time. And what's also interesting, in the statistics section, it'll even give you your power draw averages. So let's say we've set up an off-grid system and that's running off battery power, that is good information to have. Have. So to give this thing a proper test, you're probably expecting me to do some sort of high resolution online game or something. I can't do that just yet because I've got another couple of problems. If you're wondering why I'm slow to get some videos out at the moment, it's because I dropped my hard drive and lost about three months worth of filming footage. And on top of that, it's going to cost me about 750 quid just to get the footage back off it. Just after I did that, my laptop suddenly decided to not work anymore. So that's now in for repair also. So what I've done is I've pulled out my old desktop tower computer. It's about 12 years old and the specs are awful and obviously I need something that does 4k editing and precision CAD software so I thought why not buy the latest parts stick them in that old computer and see how we go do like a Linus tech tips except I don't know what I'm doing but to help me why don't I ask ChatGPT to run me through the whole process anyway hope you found that interesting and useful if you're new to my channel and want to see more why not click this video and if not how about you stop watching YouTube and get out there in the real world and forge for yourself a life worth living I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.